What up, y'all? This your boy Ace here. Welcome to After News Delight. And we got to talk about this. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about when it comes to Femme Cabot and Nat uh, Natalia Kashmir. This is, you know, this 400-meter final, it went the way, it's just exactly like the way I predicted, except who came in third. But this was something, I'm gonna I'm tell you this, I'm gonna tell you this. Femke, I mean Fem Cabot, running faster than she did in Silesia, Poland. I kind of saw that coming. But I didn't think it'd be this fast. She was both. She was well below um, forty nine point sixty. I thought it'd be. I thought okay, because she got a forty nine point seventy five last race in Silesia, right? I thought it'd be somewhere right around forty nine point sixty. She got a forty nine point forty four. And then this was the other surprise. Remember, I, the, in my preview video, for those of y'all that watched my preview video, when I was talking about Natalia Kashmir. I was not sure if she was gonna fit finish on a fifty flat again because I thought she just she was in her hometown she was egged on by the fans, but I, I kept predicting that she would come in second. But what amazed me about Natalia in this race is that I think she's building momentum now. She's officially building momentum. Like if she had the big heavy hitters like Shawnee Miller Weibo or um, Sydney McLaughlin in this race. She will be like third or fourth. And you know what's crazy is because, unfortunately for her, Natalia Kashmir would have won gold if it wasn't for Femme Cabot. It's crazy how that how that ended up. She would have been in first. She would have been in first in both races, in Silesia as well, if it wasn't for Femme Cabot. She probably like inside of her, she's like, fuck this bitch, fuck this bitch. <laughs> Let's go over the times, man. Then I'm gonna go more into this race, man. But so uh Fem Cabot had a 49.44 to win gold. Natalia Kashmir, another silver, man. So another second place spot. Getting silver at the Europeans. That's a big accomplishment for Natalia Kashmir. Her confidence for next season should be going through the roof in the 400 flat. Through the roof. Because here's the thing about Natalia. To finish under 50 seconds two times in a row, that's a big accomplishment. And the other thing is, you knew you had to do this against Fem Cabot, who was going to bring everything. And for you to do this twice in a row, I don't know if she's just motivated racing against Fem Cabot or what, or she's finding herself. Like she, I think she's like 25 now. So she's in, she's entering the prime, her prime. And Kind of reminded me of Sharika Jackson a little bit when she was still in the 400. Like how she just started building momentum, just started getting better and better and better. Natalia was a little bit slower, slightly slower in this race because she had a 49.86 in the last race in Silesia. But I really do believe that Natalia um, is building momentum to get to the 40, to get to a 49.50 pretty soon. She's building momentum. And she just needs to work on a few things. And we'll get a, we'll get back to Natalia. Let's go over the rest of the times. Anna Kilbasinka. Kilbasinka. Had a 50.29. And what was uh, interesting about Kilbasinka is that she... Okay, so remember when I was talking about the preview? Who would be the biggest threat to Natalia Kashmir? I was talking about Claver from the Netherlands, right? You know, Femke Bowles' teammate. For whatever reason, I was looking at Kilbasinka possibly coming in third. And I also talked about my preview how I knew that the Netherlands and Poland will have a have some type of uh, a double in the podium. Like one of those two countries is going to have two representatives. I thought it might have favored more for Femke Bowl and Claver to be the top three. But Kelbasinska, man, I'm telling you, man, like, 
for her to be there right when Natalia Cash married, that was unbelievable for Poland, man. Poland has to be so proud right now that they got two 400 meter runners in the top three. Because Anna herself is someone that's also been getting better. She's also been getting better. She's been showing some shades that she can do this, man. And she had to beat out Oragu from uh, Great Britain and uh, Adeliki from Ireland, who was another person that I didn't really look at, but because I had Bolingo really ahead of her, but she had a nice race because she finished in the top five, so that was pretty nice for her. So Kilbasinska had a, a 50.29. Oragu had a 50.51, and uh, Adelike had a 50.53. So they were kind of like jumbled all in there. Claver had a 50.56. If anybody had a disappointing race, it was Claver in this one because I would have expected her to be like third or fourth. Like, I didn't expect her to be sixth. I don't think this was a good race for her. Um, and so she's definitely got to improve. But Adelike definitely had a really good race she had a really good race for ireland man that, that was a pretty good pretty good race and bolingo had a 50.94 and then Baumgart uh with a 51.28 so she's got a lot to improve uh she's older than the other ladies too because she's like 33 so maybe age is playing a part in it for her but um i didn't really expect her to do much in this race anyways but the top five though didn't really surprise me too much except for Adelike, but when you look at how Kiel Basiska beat all of them for that 50.29, I thought that that was amazing, you know, for the Polish, Polish side. But uh, getting back up here to the top, man, oh, man, oh, man. And so I'm going to show you guys the splits for uh, Femke Bowl. And uh, Natalia Kashmir. That's something that they do on the European Championship thing that I like to see. So they show you the splits in the distance. So what was interesting was that Kashmir actually had the best start out of everybody. She had a 12.17, uh, uh, whereas Femke Bowl was a 12.20. And then Femke Bowl started to take over like 200 meters in. Um, but when you look at these splits, they were extra close. And actually, no, uh, I, I was wrong about Cashmere. She was uh, second um, in the first 100 meters. Uh, Clever actually had the lead. And I remember watching. I thought Clever had a good chance of uh, getting in the top three at that point. I said, oh, oh Femke Bowl and, uh, uh, and, and Clever are going to be in that top three together um, on the podium. But... You can see how consistent Kazmarek was throughout the race. She was either in second or third in these distances. If she had a better 300 meters, she could have improved on her time a little bit because she got uh, 36.29. But her splits are like dead identical to Femke Bowl. Dead identical. But where the difference was to me was it's all about, because Femke Bowl had a, uh, had a you know, okay -ish start could have been better but it's the 400 meters you don't really need as good of a start like you need in the 100 to 200 um because you got so long you got so long to go but if this is Cindy McLaughlin obviously she would have needed you know her and probably we both probably would have needed a lot better start than that they had but bro I'm telling y'all if y'all look inside the numbers man Kashmirik is is improving a lot like um She's really opening up my eyes quite a bit because she's really starting to do. It's, it's funny how her and Gina Lunk, uh, Luke and Kemper are stepping up, you know, because those are the two races that I, um, European races that I've always said, if they can ever just live up to, to their potential. And I say uh, Kill Basinska too, because she's one of those runners too who have always been like, you could see her being in first or second place. So she's in that, she's in that group too for me as runners who need to do a little bit better than what they usually do. But uh, Femke Bowl, man, I can't say enough about her, man. 49.44, proven on that 49.75. That's always great because, remember, she's kind of new to this 400-meter flat this season. Um, she's This is the second race that she's running. 
and into improved times that shows that she's improving and it shows that she's going to eventually get to about 48 seconds uh, which i know is her goal her personal goal she probably saved a little bit because she's supposed to be doubling um in the 400 meter uh, hurdles i'm going to cover that by the way on this channel so definitely subscribe um, i'm going to cover her action in the 400 meter hurdles so she is doubling i'm, I'm glad that that's what i hope Cindy mclaughlin does next year i hope she doubles in both um and eventually i want to see Fem Cabal in 200 meters i'm going to wrap this up in a little bit but i need y'all to go ahead and hit that like button for me hit that like button as y'all leave on out of here share the video subscribe to the channel especially if you're new in the zoo um any comments i got definitely put it below i appreciate the the three guys i had that commented on the preview video i'm going to respond to y'all when i get a chance and then um uh, if you want to donate to the channel, hit the super thanks button below the video. Big shout out to David Close, who gave me that uh, $10 dono a couple of weeks ago. If you guys uh, want to send money to the Cash App, if it's easier for you guys, you can hit the Cash App. I got it, uh, the name on the screen. It's dollar sign, sack exchange as well. Um, so you can hit me up over there. So to wrap this up, man, um, this was a very fascinating race. Like, like I said, Femke Bowl is going to be a huge threat and because she's only like 22 too that's why i said i would love to see her in the 200 meters one day i would love to see her in the 200 meters one day because this to me like when i see hurdle runner hurdle low runner especially in the 400 meter hurdles i always like to see them come over to the 400 meter flat and femka Bowl said it's, it's way harder than the hurdles uh for her uh so she said, if, if, and when you improve your time, and you do just as well as you did in the hurdles, like, I'm pretty sure she's already thinking about the 200 meters, like, probably doing that. Maybe she'll wait until after the Olympics in a couple of years. Because I don't see any reason for her to get into the 200 before then. She needs to try to get on the podium for the hurdles in the 400 meter flat. She might be able to, because if Cindy McLaughlin doesn't double, but I'm pretty sure Cindy McLaughlin is going to stick with the hurdle. So, but in a, in the scenario where Cindy where Cindy McLaughlin does not um, double in the hurdles, this is your gold medal champion right here. This is your gold medal winner at, at the Olympics. This is Femke Bowl. And then Cashmere got to start thinking like, you know what? If I can just improve my time a little bit, I can get the Shana Sha 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 uh, Miller Weebles of the world. You know. I can be neck and neck with Femke Bowl like I have been in the last couple of races. Like, I want to say that this one was neck and neck, but if she could just improve a little bit, man, I mean, the sky's the limit for her, man. The sky's the limit for her. And Kel Basinska, that was a, that was a great race from her. Um, Anna did a, a, a spectacular job coming in third, man. That was a really good run from her. If y'all go back and watch just the race for third, I think that was a really good race, man. But, uh, I talked too long, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, man. Shout out to all my European viewers who are watching this. Um, or, or Dutch viewers from the Netherlands. Like, I appreciate all y'all, man. Thank y'all for watching. After news to like. And I will be covering the 400-meter hurdles when Femke Bowl is in.